Welcome back to another video. First of all, you might be seeing a wonderful scenery in the back. That's due to the fact that we're in northern Germany right now on a little small island up here. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at the Volvo V60 recharge with the T8 motor. This car is going to start at 45,600 euros if you get the non-recharge version. We do have the recharge version with the T8 model. That's going to start you without the T8 model at 59,990 euros. Competitors are, for instance, a Mercedes C-Class in the T model and also a Peugeot 508 or also a BMW 3 Series Touring. So let's start off with the car and also talk about our test vehicle, which is going to set you back around 82,000 euros because we have the T8 motor in here. We have the Ultra variant and also some other stuff that are going to add the price. So let's first of all take a look at the front. We can actually see that in general, it's just Volvo, in my opinion, has just gotten so nice. Every time you drive it, it just gets more, it just looks nicer and nicer. We got this dark variant on here. You could get the bright version as well. But with this, we have this beautiful grill in here and the plug-in hybrid. And therefore, we do actually also have real intakes in here which are going to go towards the motor and just on here more black touches in general looks very very nice with the color that we have on here which is the vapor gray but in general just an amazing front as well as our led lights on here which are the basically the four hammers lights which look amazing and they really move as well they move with you once you're turning into a corner as well so it looks pretty cool let's also take a look under the hood where we can look at the engine and also the electrical engine that we have in here and you might know because we did look at the volvo XC60 as well. This engine, if you blop it up, the hood is going to go all the way up and this thing is massive. Um, but in here, we do have a two-cylinder or four-cylinder two-liter engine producing 310 horsepower in combination with that electric motor that you can see right here. That's going to produce another 145 for a total of 455 horsepower. Those are all German horsepower and 709 newton meters of torque, which is a lot. And that's going to give you 0 to 100 in 4.6 seconds with a top speed of 185 or 180 kilometers an hour, which only really matters to Germans. Any other country, it's completely... Um, irrelevant, but let's actually see if we can get that zero to 100 in 4.6 seconds. Sogar wheel spin gehabt, ein bisschen weggerutscht. Let's move on further to the side where we can again see the vapor gray color on here, which just looks amazing in my opinion. It's a really nice touch with the black design on here as well. Further down, we have our 19 inch wheels, which are the biggest you can get for the normal V60 recharge. If I'm not totally mistaken, you can get 20 inch also on the Polster Engineered variant, but that's going to cost you about 18,000 euros extra for the Polster Engineered, which if you want to check out if it's actually worth it, XC60 video right up on that corner right there, where you can check that out. But these have a braking distance of 34.6 meters. We're going to see if that's actually real and do our quick 0 to 1 or 100 to 0 test. <laughs> we do also have a 360 degree camera on here so that means we do also have cameras below our side mirrors. That's going to cost you 680 euros extra but it's a worthwhile investment to get that full 360 degree camera because it's just going to make it a lot easier. Automatically um, foldable side mirrors as well with that black touch again which looks nice and also a whole black you can see in here we do have the black design as well because our window sides are also in black which looks nice. We did also have dimmed out rear windows and those are also the acoustic windows so they are going to be a little more quieter from the inside and they are really thick windows as well so those are going to be very nice. We do have keys go in the front and also on the back which is good and also on the back we have a fairly big fuel capacity of 60 liters with a fuel consumption that is supposed to be 0.8 because it's a plug-in hybrid but in reality that's obviously not going to be what you're going to be achieving but you are going to be getting around what we currently have around 7.8 we'll look at that if that's something you would be theoretically getting but we'll do that once we're driving and on top of that we also have an electric motor which we're going to look at in a second here. Let's go first on to the back so if you go a little bit faster around we have the typical Volvo lights or also the Dacia Jogger lights which since we've tested the Dacia Jogger this always reminds me of it but every time I drive a Volvo it just looks it, it keeps looking better because Volvo and just in general they have a very nice design philosophy which looks really really cool I know it's a little bit dirty but it still looks good um, with a little bit of a roof spoiler up here with some bird shit on there so that's also pretty nice um, and just in general, it's obviously not made by, well, it's made by Sweden, not in Sweden anymore because Geely Holding Group. So therefore, it's no longer a fully Swedish company. But Geely isn't really, well, interrupting any of their designs. They're just, they're just the investors and it's everything is still run by the Swedens, which is nice. Let's also take a look under the um, boot where you can open it via this or you can also do this because I don't have the key. Oh, that was first try. 
Well, it, it beeped, but it didn't actually open. Okay, it's because I don't have the key. Ah, first try. Oh. <laughs> okay, and here we have a storage space of 519 liters up to 1,431, which is very big, and you also get a ton of legroom in the back. So this is already gonna make it very nice. We're gonna flip over the back seat so you can see how that looks as well. In here, we also, just like in the Kia Pro C GT, basically, we have this like pop-up, so you can store something behind it. It's not gonna be, if you brake fairly hard or if you accelerate fairly hard, this is obviously gonna flip back because it's not the most sturdy, but you can put most of the stuff behind that. It's gonna stay behind there, which is nice. And also a little bit more storage space right below here with some um, safety vests and stuff like that, but you can't really put anything under there. So your cables are gonna be have to staying up there. We do also have the optional towing hitch in here. So if we press the button on the side, that is gonna do our semi-automatic towing hitch, which is gonna be allowing you to tow up to two tons, which is very nice. The car weighs at around two tons as well. So you can basically tow another V60 behind it. So you can also do some big heavy loading with that. We also have very sturdy like hooks in here, which is nice. These are not in plastic, unlike in some other cars. So these are actually gonna allow you to do some good stuff. And you can also flip this up on the top and you can flip it in here. <laughs> you, can <laughs> you can flip it in there. And you can also, if you want to put it up a little bit higher, you can flip it down and then also have it up here. But that's going to really limit your view out the back, so you might want to not do that. But in general, you do have that, which is very nice. And I'm incapable of using it. We do, like I said, also have a battery in here, which is a fairly big one with the Volvo V60 recharge. This is going to allow you to get up to a kilometer range of 88 kilometers, which is very, very nice. Because that battery is 18.8 .8 kilowatts um, an hour big but the real usage you can get is 14.7, which is still a very big battery. And we'll actually see if we can get that range really once we're driving. But we do also are able to, well, we are able to charge this with 6.4 kilowatts, which is fairly decent. So you are gonna be able to charge it up fairly quickly. At home, it's gonna take you around eight hours if you just put it in the outlet, which we did overnight, which works very nicely. But 88 kilowatts is, or kilowatts an hour is 88 kilometers. There we go. What the hell is a kilometer? But it's fairly good. <laughs> like I said, we did do a fairly big journey and let's actually take a look at the fuel consumption. Fuel consumption was 0.8, that is obviously not realistic, but if we press on this button we can see we did 805 kilometers with 7.7 .7 liters. That is also a lot of, um, well, top speed, so 180 kilometers an hour on the Autobahn um, and basically Autobahn only. So it's a fairly long distance that we traveled on the Autobahn and with good amount of speeds and therefore that fuel consumption is a little bit higher than average. But you can definitely get that down if you're just doing city driving with electrical motor and hybrid version. You're gonna be looking at around five liters or 4.8 something around there with around, what is it like 15 kilowatts an hour battery usage, which is fairly decent with such a big battery as well. We can also have different modes in here, so hybrid, power, pure, and also the constant all-wheel drive. If you get the Pulse engineered, you could also get the Polestar um, well, hybrid mode in here, or drive modes, which can allow you to just have some more sporty feel to it, but these are all gonna allow you to basically drive the car a little bit different. You can also use the battery in different ways. So you can have it on auto, which is just what we are on right now. You can put it on hold, which is just gonna keep the battery level the same, and you can also put it on charge, which is gonna increase the fuel consumption to around 15 liters, so you can charge the battery on the go. So interior is basically in any other Volvo or basically Polestar. It is very luxurious, but also very minimalistic and also not the most advanced. First of all, we can see that we have the tailored Volt seats in here, which are, well, they're gonna cost you about 2,000 euros extra. You can't actually configure them right now for the Volvo V60, which is interesting because we have them in here. Um, but they are like this gray color and they look very good, but they're not the most comfortable. They are fairly hard. And they also don't have a massage function. You can't get them with the Wolf, um, with the Vol tailored seats. But over long journeys, they are they are not bad. But you can definitely get some more comfortable. They feel like an IKEA sofa. That's basically the best way to describe them. They're also sweet in here. Um, but in here, again, very minimalistic. Just like in the XC6, we have basically the same system in here. The Bowers and Wilkinson sound system that we have up here is amazing. 1,610 watts and 19 speaker. This thing sounds absolutely fantastic and we'll definitely listen to that a little bit more once we're driving. You can see we do have quite a lot of piano black in here. For instance, the whole center console is black. It's gonna look good at the start, but after a couple of weeks, couple of months, that's gonna have a lot of scratches in it and you're just gonna have to clean it a lot, as well as the surrounding of the infotainment 
mount display, which is interesting. And another thing that's also not that nice is you don't have that much, well, you don't have induct inductive loading in here, first of all, or wireless charging, and you also don't have a port, well, a place where you can basically put your phone. You do have two ports in here for USB-Cs where you can charge your phone, but if I put my phone out, you can't really put your phone in this center console. Well, you can, but you can't if you're trying to charge it because, well, then you need to have the basically the smallest cable and you also can't put it this way because that's going to interrupt it and then you're basically going to smash your phone in there. So if you put the cables in there, you can't really put it anywhere. The best solution is if you put it in there and then you flip this up. But if you have an iPhone Max, you're not going to be able to fit that in there because it's also going to be too wide. In here we have two cup holders, which again, if you put cup holders in here or if you put water bottles in there, you're not going to be able to put your phone anywhere and you don't want to put your phone under the glove box, so you don't really have any storage space where you can put that. But again, we have this crystal nice thing in here by, what is it called, Our Force Sweden, which is also illuminated at night, which looks pretty cool. Let me put those peanuts in there as well. And in general, just the quality. And again, you can have really nice quality up here. Everywhere you touch is good quality. Only place where you actually get some hard plastic is at your glove box. And this is also a fairly good storage space in there. We do also have electrical seats in here, um, which are fully automatic for your passenger and also the driver's seats. And you can also adjust these little like lumbar, not the lumbar support, like this little, um, whatever it's called, like for your lower or your upper legs. You can put that forward and backwards, whatever you want. The infotainment display is okay. Well, it's, it's fairly big. You can actually watch YouTube and stuff like on here because it's Android supported. It doesn't have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto wireless. It only has it via cable. So again, you have to put it in there, which is not nice. But the system works nice. It's Google, Apple Play. Um, well, it has Google Maps and YouTube, like I said. Infotainment display is also very nice. You can't really change much on the digital cockpit, though. There's only one view, and that's it. And heads-up display, which is also very, very nice. Steering wheel, again, it's Volvo standard. It feels really good and it's also very comfortable to drive, but it may be a little bit too simplistic. But in general, just very luxurious in here with all the quality that you get, which is amazing. And we do also have a panoramic window if you want to film up there. We do have a slider up here so you can slide it backwards if the car would be on. You can slide this backwards and it's a really big panoramic window as well. So from the back, once we look at that, it looks amazing. We do have a little bit of a uh, lip in there, but you can actually flip it. This is the furthest you can go if I flip it up like that. It's again, panoramic window is just going to make it look way more spacious in here and just amazing. And the back, again, the same thing. Wonderful, interesting and quirky looking seats, which are, they're fairly good, but they're not going to be the most comfortable over long journeys. We've been driving for around 700, we did a 700 kilometer journey to get to Northern um, Ireland, I said, to Northern Germany here. Um, if you sit in the back, it's okay, but after a long time, they're just gonna feel too much like an Ikea sofa and it just isn't that comfortable. Isofix points in here are good to reach. You do have a fairly big plastic cover on it, so if you have a big person, that's gonna maybe um, intrude a little bit to your seating comfort. We do also have this little storage space in here. Well, not storage space, but we do have two couples in here and a big center console where you can basically put your um, arms on there and also a little bit of a pass through in here so you could theoretically flip that over but you can only put like one ski through there so not the biggest the center hump is actually fairly big so the tunnel is big in here and you can't really do anything about it because that's always going to be there for a non-electric car and we also ha don't have that much storage space up here so there's just going to be two usb c's and seating um, heat seating on your passenger and also well, on basically the two back seats, which is nice, but again, no place where you can really put your phone apart from in this little storage space in here. But that's also a little bit intuitive because the seat has like this arching back to it, which is not that nice. When we look at the seating position, you have a ton of leg room. This is adjusted to me, so a meter and 80 or six foot or five foot 11. Um, so a good amount of space in there. And also headroom is quite a lot. We do have the panoramic window, so it's gonna be even nicer. If you sit in the center, you can have a lot of headroom up there. Quality wise, one thing that is not that quality is that, well, first of all, Bowen Wilkinson sound system is amazing. You have all the quality just like you have on the front, but the climate control is on the side, as you can see right up there, but you can't adjust it. You can't adjust the temperature in the back, which is unfortunate because the back is supposed to be more of the chauffeur seats and well, you don't have any climate control in here, which is not that nice. So we're driving on the parking lot here. We have a turning radius of 11.7 meters, which is actually a fairly decent rate for con or considering the car that you have with the length of four meters and 76 centimeters. That's a fairly good turning radius. That is also with the 19 inch wheels. You could theoretically also get the 18 or the 17 inch wheels. That's gonna lower your 
um, turning radius by a little bit. But 11.7 is completely fine. When it comes to the steering input as well, you really don't need much steering input and it just feels very, very nice. Just like any other Volvo, it just feels relaxed and also amazing just to drive because it feels very luxurious. You can also go into the assist modes in here or the drive modes and you can change the way that the steering feels. Right now we have a sporty feel and if we change that towards, well, basically being a comfortable driver, then you can have less input and it's just gonna make it a little bit more smooth. If we look at this now and then if you turn it on, it's more direct a little bit. You can see it also wobbles a little bit further to the side, which is nice. There's a couple of safety features in here. Well, Volvo is known for the safety features. That's why it also has an NCAP norm of 96% for adult safety and for child safety around 84%, so a fairly high rate, just like in the Polestar 2. But in here, we have a couple of safety features. Um, well, not in there. You could theoretically turn one thing off that is going to be a lane keeping assist um, or a lane keeping aid, which is going, just going to keep you in the um, complete lane and just give you that annoying vibration. That's why we also turn it off. But in here we have a heads up display, we adaptive cruise control, we have travel assist, lane keeping assist, blind spot assist, and so there's a ton of stuff that's going to allow you to just have a comfortable ride on the highway, for instance. We did the journey, which was now around like 500, 600 kilometers, and really just pressing on this button and then having, okay, now um, it didn't find a center road or a center line, that's why it's not doing the steering, but it's just going to keep your adaptive cruise control on. And there we go, now it's lane keeping assist, so if I put my foot off the, or take my hands off, it's just going to steer, but it doesn't see its um, center line because there is none, so it's not going to work perfectly right now. But that really works amazing, even in construction zone, it works really nice. Lane keeping assist is also very helpful, but one thing that's, well not lane keeping assist, blind spot assist is also pretty cool. But the side mirrors are actually, they're fairly small, but the rim is fairly big, so it doesn't look that really, it doesn't look that sleek. You also do have the heads-up display, which gives you all the relative information. And because of that digital cockpit and also the infotainment display, because it's an Android-based system, you do get Google Maps um, in here. And with Google Assistant, which works fairly nice, you're gonna be able to basically view everything via the digital cockpit when it comes to your navigation, which is good. Because Volvo is obviously supposed to be in the luxury category, you definitely feel that in here. You have a wonderful sound system, which we can listen to here in a second. You also get amazing quality, like we already talked about. Tire noise in here are basically non-existent. You have a little bit of wind noise because it's fairly windy out right now, but in general, it's really, really quiet in the cabin. And also, the suspension in here feels really nice. Driving over bumps obviously is not the smoothest, but it really it, you don't get bothered by it, and it feels really comfortable. And just like I said, steering feels very nice and noises in here, it's really quiet. Even going at 180 like we did on the highway, it's really quiet. With that sound system that we have in here, the Bowers & Wilkins sound system, which sounds amazing, if we go on to our Bluetooth, we can listen to the Polestar 3, um, well, kind of like trailer for their sound system. So let's listen to that real quick. That is enough, but it really does sound amazing. 1,410 watts with those 19 speakers and that bass as well, it just sounds amazing. When it comes to the surrounding view, the car is also very nice. You got a big rear window. We do have the 360 degree camera in here, which is nice. And also, while well, the side mirrors are a little bit small in my opinion, but in general, you don't have big pillars in here, so everything is fairly easy to look out on. So what's my final verdict on the V60 Recharge? Well, it's a really solid car. This car, obviously, it's gonna start at a fairly high price if you wanna get the Ultra variant with all the extra features. 82,000 is a fairly steep price, or 79, 78, if you get none of the extra excess that we have in here. But 82,000 for a test vehicle is a fairly steep price, but considering, if you look at a um, Mercedes C-Class, for instance, you're gonna be able, or well, you're gonna have to add a lot of stuff to actually make the car feel very nice in the interior. And Volvo, with its basic, Standard equipment already is a very, very nice vehicle. Lots of features are nice in here. It's very luxurious. And if you're looking for something like this, lots of space in there as well. It's really a solid car. Hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. We'll see you next time. And until then, make sure to...
be happy. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. <laughs>